In this video, we are talking about this question, how to do digital marketing for small business. Well, make sure you stay tuned and keep listening because I will share with you some small business marketing strategies and tactics which can help you grow a small business online. So I suggest that you avoid all distractions and pay close attention to the ideas that I will give you. Keep watching. Hi, my name is Ashley. If you're new to the channel, please make sure you hit the subscribe button so you get alerted about new videos. Please make sure you give the video a like because that tells me you find these videos useful. Thank you. So let's get into it. So to begin with, whether you're in the process of launching a new business or already have one, having a strong online presence for your brand is extremely important. I am going to help you build and optimize your small business marketing strategy using inbound marketing, setting you up to attract new clients and ultimately grow your business. Marketing is meant to raise brand awareness and build a pipeline of qualified leads that turn into sales. With a small business, getting the word out can be challenging due to less visibility and lack of resources like budget or time. However, there are key strategies that can help you scale your small business's marketing efforts. Whether you're struggling with a limited budget, the time restraints caused by having a smaller team or even a lack of direction, a marketing plan that's appropriate for your business can provide guidance as you scale. I will now give you some powerful small business marketing strategies to help you grow a small business. Here we go. So the first strategy is to know your target audience. A key mistake is thinking that anyone is your buyer. Larger companies may be able to appeal to a wide market, but they say the riches are in the niches for a reason. A niche is where you'll have the most leverage as a small business. And to develop a niche and appeal to buyers within the niche, you must understand their pains, problems, triggering events and priorities. What is pushing them to make a purchasing decision? What does it look like if they succeed? Knowing these things will help you craft messaging that resonates and makes a compelling case for your solution. Start by thinking about your existing customers and then who you'd like to work with. Then create a buyer persona to start the process of getting into the head of your ideal client. A target audience is a group of consumers characterized by behavior and specific demographics such as female extreme athletes between the ages of 18 and 25. Target audiences are a pillar of most business influencing decision making for marketing strategy. Target audiences often decide where to spend money on ads, how to appeal to customers and what products to build next. They are also used to define the buyer personas of a business as well. Buyer personas are a representative overview of a business's ideal customer drawn from data that makes up a target audience. Let me tell you about some of these demographics and behavior, which include location, age, gender, employment, and income. This information helps understand the customer and how they make purchase decisions. Targeting a specific audience will help your campaigns reach the correct people who will relate most to your company's message and products. Always make sure to understand the difference between target audience and target market. While similar, their difference is critical for marketers. Both target audience and target markets are centered around segmenting customers into groups to make informed business decisions. However, a target market is a specific group of consumers a company's products target. A target audience defines that group using audience demographics, interests and buying history. Essentially, you can describe your target market by finding your target audience. If a target market were marketers aged 25 to 35, the target audience would be marketers living in Boston, Massachusetts aged 25 to 35. Let me now tell you about types of target audience. When we talk about types of target audiences, we're talking about more ways to define who you're creating a campaign for. You can segment your audience into groups or define them further using categories, such as the following. Purchase intention. This refers to groups of people looking for a specific product and wanting to collect more information before doing so. Some examples include consumers buying a new laptop, vehicle, clothing or television. 
This data is necessary to see how you can better direct your messaging to your audience. Interests. This is data about what people are into like hobbies. Knowing this data helps you connect with your audience in a relatable way and unearth bio motivation and behaviours. For example, when the weather is warmer and road racing season begins, consumers who enjoy road biking as a hobby are likely most interested in new road bikes in the spring. For example, suppose you find many potential audiences interested in travelling. In that case, you can figure out how to use that message in your marketing campaign to appeal to more potential buyers. Subculture These are groups of people who identify with a shared experience. An example of this would be a specific music scene or genre of entertainment. People define themselves by subcultures and companies can use those cultures to understand who they're reaching out to. An example of reaching a subculture is thinking of how they relate to your business, especially if you have a large potential audience. For instance, Netflix markets to their subcultures people who watch specific types of content using social media accounts directed to those subcultures. As you've probably guessed, coming up with a target audience involves some research which goes into fleshing out who you want to reach and how you can get there in a way that stands out from competitors. Use Google Analytics to learn more about your customers. Google Analytics is excellent for obtaining demographic details about your audience and their interests. With Google Analytics, you'll be able to see website insights broken into different sections like age, gender and location. These sections are labelled clearly on the dashboard and provide colourful graphs for you to interpret. Create a reader persona to target blog content. With reader personas, you'll never forget who you're writing for. Your reader persona should be near identical to your buyer persona because your blog should contain content that will be useful for your readers. For example, marketers probably want to read blogs about digital media. The difference between a reader persona and a buyer persona is that a reader persona generally focuses on the challenges your persona might face. How can you write content that solves those challenges? For example, if one of the challenges you've identified in your buyer persona is Marketing Mario wants to find a solution to low ROI on ad spending, you can use a reader persona to think of content surrounding helping that challenge. Here is the next strategy. Emphasize your value proposition. If there's no difference between you and your competition, there's no reason why a buyer would be compelled to work with you. Your value proposition is what will differentiate you from others in your space and make up your prospects' minds that you're the provider to go with. What do you do better than anyone in the industry? Conveying this makes a compelling argument. A value proposition is a short statement that communicates why buyers should choose your products or services. It's more than just a product or service description. It's the specific solution that your business provides and the promise of value that a customer can expect you to deliver. Value propositions are one of the most important conversion factors. A great value proposition could be the difference between losing a sale and closing it. For that reason, it's important to create one that accurately represents your products and services and makes it clear why you're the best choice. However, writing it from scratch is hard. Your value proposition is a unique identifier for your business. Without it, buyers won't have a reason to purchase what you sell. They may even choose a competitor simply because that business communicates its value proposition clearly in its marketing campaigns and sales process. That said, you might think, isn't my value prop interchangeable with, say, my slogan? No. It's easy to confuse your value proposition with other similar brand assets, such as your mission statement, slogan or tagline. Your value proposition will most often appear on your website. While you can include it on marketing campaigns and brochures, the most visible place is your homepage and if you'd like, your product pages. There are three main elements of a value proposition, the headline, the subheadline and a visual element. 
Headline. The headline of your value proposition describes the benefit the customer will receive as a result of making a purchase from your business. The headline can be creative and catchy, but it should be clear and concise first and foremost. Subheadline or paragraph. The subheadline or paragraph should explain in detail what your company offers, who it serves, and why. In this section, you can elaborate on the information in the headline. Visual element. In some cases, a video, infographic, or image may convey your value proposition better than words alone can. Enhance your message with these visual elements to capture your audience's attention. Let me give you the next strategy. Stay focused on singular goals and objectives. If you're exploring the world of marketing, you may have noticed that there are a gazillion directions you can go in. It's tempting to do it all at once and craft a compilated machine in the hopes that you covered all your bases and it's easy to take on too much. Instead, identify where the biggest impact will be. Where is the biggest blind spot in your marketing that's prohibiting your growth? Set a performance goal around that one key area and focus your resources on the activities and tactics that will achieve that one performance goal. You can expand your efforts or pivot to other initiatives when you've made more progress towards that singular goal. Here is another strategy. Capitalize on short-term plays. Start scrappy. As you scale, it's critical to see ROI sooner. This will give you the momentum and cash flow to put toward larger projects, long-term plays, and more sustainable growth models. Tactics that take time to build, such as SEO, are poor fits for your primary initiatives because you won't see a return soon enough for your liking. If you have enough resources to start there, great, but don't put all your eggs in that basket. If you have evidence that people are taking to Google with purchasing intent for your particular solution, you may find that paid ads will give you that short-term ROI. Let me ask you a question. Which strategy from this video are you going to use first? Leave a comment under the video and let me know. So the things that I have covered in this tutorial will help you do digital marketing for a small business. If you want more help with internet marketing, with step-by-step -step training with leading industry experts to learn and understand digital marketing, go and click the link under the video now and visit the Internet Business School, the UK's leading internet marketing training company. It will give you all the training, skills and knowledge you need to create a profitable online business. Continuously updated content means you'll get cutting edge digital marketing and soft skills. If you're interested in that, which I hope you are, just click the link in the description box under the video now and take a look at it. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button and please give the video a like. If you have any questions, leave a comment under the video below and I will follow up with you. Thanks for watching.